Hello everyone. In our previous videos, we covered various topics such as how to download a stock prices from the internet, from sources like Yahoo Finance, how to analyze uh, stock returns, for example, by um, creating histograms and by um, deriving some descriptive statistics. And now it's time to move on to something related, but slightly different. We now want to understand how stocks interact with each other, or more precisely, how their returns relate to each other. And we, we need a statistical measure for that. Well, there are two candidates. One is covariance and the other is correlation. And they are closely linked because correlation coefficient is just a scaled version of uh, the covariance. But we will more often work with correlation coefficients because mathematically they are confined uh, between minus one to plus one. A minus one indicating a perfect negative correlation and plus one indicating perfect positive correlation. So in this tutorial, I would like to show you how to use Excel to compute uh, the correlation coefficient between various stocks. And we will be focusing on two stocks we have used before in previous videos and also a new one. So we've got three stocks here, Microsoft, Kellogg and Bank of America. And we've got data over a long period of time, over 30 years to be precise. So what I would like to do, I want to calculate the realized correlation coefficient over this period for each pair of stock. So let's begin with Microsoft and Kellogg. And what I will do is I will actually build what's called a correlation matrix. So we have the tickers, Microsoft, Kellogg, Bank of America. So I will begin with the correlation between Microsoft and Kellogg, okay? So do, to do that, you need to use the corral function, which means uh, basically it stands for correlation. Okay. So we begin here, select the entire column, put a comma, then move on to the next column, which is Kellogg's. Okay. So again, let's uh, need to select the entire column data here, close the parentheses and click enter. And here we are. This is the correlation coefficient between Microsoft and Kellogg. I can actually format this a bit nicer. So let's format these cells as a number with two decimal uh, places. So as you can see over this 30 year period, uh, the correlation between these stocks was positive, but not very high. So for example, if the correlation coefficient was zero, we would say that the two stocks uh, were uncorrelated over this period. Uh, instead, we have a slight positive correlation. Typically, it's common to see positive correlation between any randomly uh, chosen stock pair, but the extent of correlation would vary uh, across the pairs, of course. So you might get quite high figures, you know, 0 0.6, 0 0.7, and also quite low figures like this, and even negative ones in some cases. But let's uh, move on. So let me actually copy this, paste over here. Uh, of course, I'll need to readjust. So this is actually what not what I want. I would like to now sort of move this oops, over here to get the correlation between Microsoft and Bank of America over the same period. And as you can see, it is stronger, or it was stronger, it's 0.3, okay? How about the correlation of Microsoft itself? This sounds like a silly question, but I think it, it's quite instructive actually to check that out, to see what happens if for both columns, select the Microsoft, stock itself. And as you can see, the correlation coefficient is naturally one. So in other words, Microsoft returns are perfectly correlated with themselves, okay? 
And we would get the same result, for example, if we did for Kellogg returns and Bank of America returns. Okay, we've done Microsoft Kellogg, we've done Microsoft Bank of America. Uh, what we haven't done so far is Kellogg and Bank of America. So let's try to again speed up things a bit. So let me copy the, uh, copy the cell, but I need to adjust. So I need to move these back up. And also move this over here so that I get the correlation between Kellogg and Bank of America. And this turns out to be 0.21. Okay, about Kellogg with itself. So this should be, if I select the right columns, this should be one, right? There you go. How about Kellogg and Microsoft? Well, this will be the same as Microsoft Kellogg. So I can simply set this equal to here because the correlation between stock A and B must be equal to the correlation between stock B and A. So changing the order of the columns or the data won't make any difference. We can actually verify that. Why not? Instead of doing this shortcut, let's explicitly show that we would get same results. So we want the correlation between Kellogg and Microsoft. There we go. As you can see, the result is the same. Okay, so with that logic, uh, the correlation between Bank of America and Microsoft will be equal to this because this is Microsoft and Bank of America, the same thing. Okay, so let's copy that. Again, we could verify that, but I think it should be pretty obvious. And the correlation between uh, Bank of America and Kellogg should be the same as the one between Kellogg and Bank of America. I can set this equal to this. And finally, I know that the correlation of Bank of America returns with itself will be equal to one. Let's quickly verify that as well. So we've got Bank of America returns on both columns. And of course, this will be equal to one. So what we've got here is called a correlation matrix. And in this case, we are talking about realized or historical correlations. Whether or not uh, these are good forecasts for the future is a different issue, but at least they would have some information about future correlation between these pairs as well. What would be interesting to check out or understand is that these correlations don't necessarily stay the same over time. So for example, instead of this 30 year period, if I selected less observations, let's say the most recent 20 year, I would probably get a different estimate. So let's try to verify that. So since we have um, monthly returns here, so of course each year we've got 12 months and for uh, 10 years, we have 120 months. So let's start, so let's discard the first 10 years and let's start from a row 122 in both cases and see what's, how does correlation change over this period. So this was the original one, okay, for the 30 year period. As you can see for the most recent 20 year period, the correlation is actually even lower. So let's try one more. Let's see for uh, Microsoft and Bank of America. So 0.30, the original figure. Let's see how this would be different we focused on the most recent 10 years, so 20 years. Oops, did I do it right? Yeah, it seems like. So in this case, actually it hasn't changed, right? So if even if we focus on the most 20 years, most recent, uh, the estimate is the same. We could try something different. We can put another, we can discard another uh, 10 years and focus on the last or the most recent 10 years. So let's see. And now we have a different figure, right? 0 0.45. I'm oh, sorry, actually, I have this, I have set this equal to this. Doesn't matter. So we can see that as I change the time frame, sample period, my estimate is changing. So it has 
risen from 0.30 to 0.45 in the case of uh, Microsoft and Barclays. As, as you can see for Microsoft and Kellogg, it actually had dropped a bit. Okay, so this is how we can calculate correlations uh, using Excel. We can of course look at the correlations between a stock and the market itself as well. We will, uh, we will examine that later on uh, in the series because that will relate nicely to the concept of uh, stock betas. So let's stop uh, uh, here for this uh, video and we will continue with another one uh, in, in our series on analyzing stock returns.